Okay, go ahead. So we can go ahead and again officially call the yes, order please. at now 405 still. Um, so then the first item up is the approval of the May 17 minutes. Are there any changes or questions? I would move approval of the minutes. So, yeah. Any discussion from anybody? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. So it carries. So item two is election of the chair. We have the new chair and vice chair. I was chair last year and Jim was vice chair last year. So <laughs> I was kind of trying to get out of it. <laughs> Anybody have interest in being chair or okay. no? <laughs> <laughs> I would make a motion that uh, uh, nominating uh, Corey Mace for chair and as a slate, we'd add uh, Jim as vice chair. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Um, I would nominate uh, Corey Mace for the chair and the vice chair, I would nominate Jim. And there's Jose. There he is. Strong. You got it. Jim Strong. Say strong or Hi, strong. Jose. Can you hear? Hello. There he is. Hi. So we want to repeat that, I guess. Maybe he wants to be chair. We just made we just made a motion. So yeah. yeah. Um, the motion is Kathy made to reelect me as chair and Jim as vice chair. Hi. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> All right. Um. All those in favor, I guess, say aye. 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 Can I oppose that? <laughs> sure. You could. You could. Well, she carries. Um, we already welcomed um, Kate. I guess I went out of order. Um, I don't know, Jose, you want to introduce yourself? We have a uh, new member, um, Kate Miller, with a um, chamber. Hi, Kate. Um, I work oh. at Hover Avenue Diner, um, the general manager, our owner there. Um, and I've been part of the board for at least a couple of years, maybe three years. I'm not sure. I had a delicious salad from there today. Awesome. Good to hear. <laughs> Should have completed it with a cookie that's like 1,200 calories. <laughs> we have some cookies. There are cookies up there. Best you eat them. I've got to be one of your top clients for your cookies. <laughs> <laughs> You're right up there. <laughs> Um, so, so part of Kate's welcome, though, is I believe she has to be sworn in. Okay. Does that sound right to everybody? Um, we've no. never done that before. I, I thought we just signed it, but... But we, Kate's, you know, we might want to do that. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, you you this out yet? No, sorry. No, that's okay. If if she doesn't need to do it publicly, if she can just sign it, then that's fine with me, too. Yeah, just, Here you go. Know. You can... You can hand them in at the end of class. Okay. <laughs> Unless you want to do something publicly, should we ever raise our right hand or? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Is this practice? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, thank you for joining our team. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. We know you're going to add a lot. We already yeah. have a great partnership with the chamber. So this is just it. And in my previous life, oh, um, nice. we so were the chamber and tourism. So I did have some background knowledge of all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Perfect. So the next item. We can skip over five if necessary. A formal recognition, which if you had been available at the last Common Council meeting, you would have received this, but it's your recognition of 10 years of service to ah. the Milton Tourism Commission. Sweet. Thanks. Thank you. Part of the reason that we have cookies, both of you. <laughs> so, thank you very much for everything you've done for the commission all these years. Yeah, for sure. Had ten years institutional knowledge over there. Ten years is a monumental achievement, and you can, as far as committee is <laughs> Right, right. In yeah. anything, in jobs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, next item up would be the um. Okay, so we got hotel updates and uh, we have an action item in there too. So, I missed that. Sorry. so in the minutes, um, it had been put that in today's meeting, we would discuss the tourism economic report. Okay. I don't have it yet. 
All I have is the statewide numbers, uh, the broken down numbers we haven't received yet. So hopefully I'll be able to, to report back on that. So we need a motion to defer that? I, yeah, I think so because it was in the minutes for a, a discussion item for this week. Okay. So just a motion to defer to July when the report's available. Thank you. Make a motion to defer to the Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Everyone said aye, so nobody opposed. Um, hotel updates. Yeah, um, you know, it's we're, we're busy. You know, business travel is still way down in comparison to what it was before. We're probably back at 25 to 30 percent. Um, but your business is still moving leisure, it's still really strong. So we're doing well. Um, we actually had to shut the house down and we're able to service the uh, the rooms that we already have sold. So that's it's a better than the opposite place to be. It's a better than the 2020 place to be, certainly, and better than the 2021 place to be. So it's, it's great. Um, we're adding staff too, so that's starting to uh, pick up in the last couple of months. Um, yeah. yeah, right now, I mean, we've got a call. I have an update too. Um, I We obviously just got done with USA Hockey. You got done with USA yeah, Hockey. Yeah. And it's just been nothing but positive feedback. They were just absolutely blown away. So awesome job for yeah. you guys. We got. We got good uh, feedback from the transportation side too. So yeah. we weren't late, so that's all that matters. Oh, yeah. Very well, you're, you're positive things about our transport as well. When we get here on the way out, a lot of positive comments. That was great. It was over 600 meal functions over 14 days. Oh, yeah. Lots of last minute changes too. I don't know oh, if you saw that. <laughs> hey, can you uh, take us new blurs? Uh, sure, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was tough. It was a challenge, yeah. but we pulled it Worth it though, all the way. That is, that's great. I mean, I remember when it, when it came to you, it's like, how are we going to do this? Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yep. and, and excellent, excellent. We're doing that. Yeah, it was good. So, yeah, that was huge. Um, we're not paid this month to exceed budget by a healthy amount, a lot to do with USA hockey. Um, but the trailing three months, including this month, will be the first three months that we've exceeded budget in a row since pre pandemic. So, yeah. Staff updates, do you have more? Um, only to add to that enthusiasm with the, the latest star report from May, um, comparing this time of the year to the last time of the year, um, we're up 61.1% in occupancy. So, so it's, it's on the rebound. Like that's an official, we're, we're anything over 40%, we're on the rebound. And so I just, I wanted to share that with you guys because it kind of gives you the tingles. Yeah. <laughs> Things are yeah. And this is through May. This is not the world. It doesn't even touch USA Hockey. It doesn't. So I'm really excited to see what June will be. And I'll, I'll report that um, back to you guys uh, in July too, just to give you a little bit more of a glimpse. But Things are coming back. And yes, I've heard that business travel is probably not going to come back to 23, 24. But I've also heard that it's it's trickling in a little faster it than is. they thought, it is. you know, rather than like a cutoff and then coming in. So fingers yeah, crossed, yeah. everybody. People are wanting to travel. Yeah, considering we were at like five BT room nights per night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, probably six months ago, and now we're at like 35. It's a pretty good increase. Mm -hmm. you know, historically, we've been about 100. For perspective, we came along those. Yeah. Are you booked for CrossFit? So we are, but with other groups other than CrossFit. So okay. um, yeah, we, we're not um, that that keep CrossFit weekend of August 5th and 6th. Um, we got two large groups in the house that are kind of spanning multiple nights. So they chilled CrossFit out of our property. I'm sure the backyard, the backyard is closed that weekend. So that tells me that it's a Got a good share. Okay. Okay. I did talk to um, some friends at the Fairfield too. They said they're corporate wise, kind of the same thing. Yeah. Lack of epic stuff, but it's overall leisure. They're doing very well. Yeah. It's night and day. Yeah. It's, very it's good. good to hear. They're still cleaner rooms. But right. Kevin, how are yeah. your events coming? Uh, it's really, I mean, May was just because of weather, but these first four weeks of band, incredible. And then so just the calls. Or non-stop for events and business happy hours and and, and weddings and, and, and so yeah it's all coming back we see it we're about you know, we're up probably 15 percent on draft um but we're still you know, kind of like everyone we're still not to where pre-pandemic numbers are still down about 25 percent but 
fifteen percent increase. For, that's the on-premise stuff. Mm -hmm. Bars, restaurants yeah. are coming back slowly. Um, so yeah, I'm seeing the things in June have really escalated. It's going to be some of, some of our larger corporate um, holiday parties that have canceled the last few weeks as well are now coming out of the work to kind of talk about what it would look like to potentially bring it back this year. So that's see corporations thinking about spending that money. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do have an email going out in July, several communications to like have your keep your holiday parties yeah. here yeah. and with the matrix um, event space. So yeah. Um, I think that's all we had. Oh, did you have anything you wanted to add about events? How uh, Sims of Norway or anything worked out? Well? Oh, no, I mean, I just, I had the opportunity to be on site uh, last week for Sons of Norway and yeah. Sangerfest. I was saying it's Sangerfest for long. <laughs> um, and it was just fun to like yeah. finally be back at an event and having an info table. And we saw a lot of those people downtown. Yes, yes. Well, did that was here last year too? I don't no. believe so, no. They thought, they thought about it, didn't they? Yeah, that we had been on a pandemic and then it kind of fizzled out. And then they actually, this is Sonic Fest, and Sons of Norway actually worked up to 2020, maybe 2022. So it's kind of interesting being the demographics of the group and during the peak of the pandemic. Like, yeah, 2022, we were fine. A lot of the convention, you know, like everybody else was like, oh, I'll talk to you maybe in 2022 and see what happens. And yeah, they were gone, oh, one day. No so question. It was very cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was really fun. See people. Yes. Sweet. Um, we could try and move forward unless anyone else has anything else. Uh, next item up, I believe, is Belter and Lincoln. I might think it's closed. Yeah. Yes. So Belter and Lincoln's contract, um, again, like there's that typo that Kate found. And then we also had to add addresses. But other than that, if I have your blessing, it'll go before finance and common council. Finance. What was the edit? I can make the motion. So on, hold on one second. On page four, under part four, billing practices, BT should be changed to BM. Yes, ma'am. BT. BT. Yep, should be changed to BM. And then on, I think it's page nine, one second. Okay. Page eight, uh, under part G notices, uh, following uh, the bullet points, we include mailing addresses for Belter and Lincoln okay. and visit mm -hmm. Middleton. Page notices. Okay, I'll make that motion. Okay, thank you. And this has been through city attorney approval yet, or it has to go Yes, uh, so Larry has seen it. He redlined it. Belter and Lincoln received that copy, approved okay. all of his corrections. This this thing is ready to go. Okay, city attorney is good. You say your motion to approve? Okay. I'd make that motion with those two edits. Okay. Okay. All those, I guess, any further discussion? All right. All those, well, do I want to oh. say in here not to exceed? Um, I, I believe the contract itself says that. It does. One second. I'm going to add that it was 6390. Oh, 90. I don't know. One second. It's in here. And you're right. It's something like that. $8,090. And I'm just, I would just call that out of finance just so they have an opinion. They might not have to it. We budgeted 65. They came in a little under. Well, hold on. 63090. What page are you on? Sorry. Um, I don't know which page number you're looking at, but. In the middle, it's page eight, or it's three. Oh, okay. Nine. Oh, there it is. The number that under agency professional services, sixty-three thousand and ninety dollars. Yeah. 
And that I'll just make a motion not to exceed that. Yep. We good. And a second on the new motion. Sorry. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. That was everybody. No people's motion carries. So for the next item, I'm going to propose that we just combine eight and ten. And that way, I don't know what you guys need from me before I can step out. If you need anything from me at all, I explained to Mario, I don't really have anything to do with this contract. It's it's their owner. I couldn't even tell you really how to see what it looks like. So, and that was on purpose. So I don't know if you want any information from me um, prior to this. I will say one of the reasons why I had it in this order is number eight. So item number eight, we're discussing the trolley ridership mm -hmm. and, and value of. Item on number nine talks about what we could do with the money if we didn't oh, yeah. continue mm -hmm. with the trolley. And then we could vote on whether or not we continue with the trolley. So that's the reason why it's in order. Just so that's fine. Know. We can keep it that way. I am I supposed to stay here for that or no? You have to step out for the voting. For the voting. Well, the discussion and the vote. I, I think you have to recuse yourself from. Does he have to recuse I himself to, from discussion? That, that is not how I understand it. If you, if there's any conflict, you you, you, can't you walk out no matter what. Yeah, so I wouldn't out. be. I wouldn't actually be voting on anything. Right, I mean, just you would step out. Yes. yes, and that's how they've done it, and I've seen it at the county commission. So right. discussion and and vote. Okay, so I guess you guys just need to let me know if you need you anything have, yeah. from here. Do you have a phone you can ping you when you want to? <laughs> <laughs> I think common council is like cooler than it is in here just so you know so okay, then the ridership okay. stuff i guess i i could so the ridership isn't a voting does yeah. he need to step out for I that think so i think we can just okay. go over it i don't really have anything to add so um on that like you guys have i have numbers, some so. i do have some corrections so in the in the original uh trolley moa it says uh a minimum, like he's proposing a minimum of 30 hours for 31 weeks. Yeah. And in my breakdown, I I put 30 weeks. Yeah. So it'd actually be more of 930 hours instead of 900 hours. So that changes the minute. Okay, I saw so, that in one spot. Yeah, yeah, so I could, I mean, I made a new copy and I can send that out to you guys if you want to see that. Um, but the differences would be, for instance, um, for the year of 2023, the estimated cost would actually be 111,600. Um, for 24, it'd be 116,250. And for 2025, it would be 120,900. So it, I mean, obviously it's more because it's 30 hours. Um, and then I, I did some other quick math too for ridership costs, if you have questions about that. But basically, I mean, you've got the gist of it. And if you want exact numbers, I can give you. I also was trying to figure out decreased percentages, if that was something you wanted to see. And I went through the invoices, the invoices that I have access to, to figure out the number of hours served in 2019 and 2021. So you could see that difference as well. Mm -hmm. So whatever questions you have about um, the trolley agreement and the hours and the cost, um, let me know if it's something I can answer. Ultimately, our recommendation is to not continue with the trolley agreement for 2023 to 25. We can always come back in a few years and see if it's something we want to reapproach, but we don't feel that the ridership is popular enough and what it's being used for. Yeah, it um, seems like it's more for the residents. Yes, the and like as it, you know, outlined in the justification. Um, and I don't think it's a surprise to any of you because uh, I've heard some of this from some of you. And as the marketing person, the trolley is an adorable thing to market. It really is. But we're spending ninety-seven thousand dollars this year on it. And I could use that for some really, really cool things that would reach a lot more people than 1,400. And so. Well, the one thing that stuck out in my mind is that, you know, when this was first proposed, it's like, let's, let's try, you know, and let's see where it goes. And that was in, and you, you bring up here the epic people who part of that conversation, maybe at that time, people starting you're trying to think of something different and it doesn't appear like they're going to be that time, time soon but not. and this has been a good long tri trial you know? and i for one have heard this over and over if it's an empty and they don't you know i don't you know you're not, it's not going to be fun all the time but um more for me people think why can't we use it to do this it should go down to lakeview so people can go, you know and it's just like it's not how this is designed to be funded and it's just it's just 
raises a lot of confusion in people's minds of how this how it can't be used. Well, and if it's okay with you to kind of go through a little bit jumping um, forward to the meeting planner incentive initiative, I am considering we should save back some of that money and sponsor a trolley for events. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm um, I'm working with Laura on our 23 budget, which is one of the reasons we need to make decisions tonight because I have to have a draft in July and the final two in August. So I, I need to know what kind of money I have to work with, right? And this incentive package kind of hopefully outlines to you what we could really do with that money. And the trolley money, we could still sponsor six or more events for like four hour evenings. I feel like the, the ridership would be really high because people would think it's special. Yeah. Like, oh, they only have it for this. And part of that would be, I mean, we're always in the Good Neighbor Fest parade. Um, I was thinking about Bach Fest um, as well. And then there are a couple of other events that kind of just happen every year where we're asked to help out with. And then if a hotel is having an event where they're like, we would like to have the trolley run over an evening shift for dinner to take people downtown, and it wouldn't even have to be the same route, right? Because we can we can create that. And so it wouldn't necessarily be going away forever. It would no longer be our branded trolley. Because of course, if we ended a contract with Badger, they're not going to keep a visit Middleton trolley. But we could have our visitor guide on the trolley yeah. during that time. That kind of thing. Would this be something like, what, let's say the Southern Norway or whatever, that they, when they call and they're talk, thinking about moving from, that you could just bring this up and say, you know what? It could, would. I'm, I'm considering it as underneath a, a destination partnership sponsorship. So you would apply for it like you would our current sponsorship rates. So an event that wants to come here and they want, they're like, what can we apply for this trolley transportation section? Can we apply for this? Can we apply for that? And then the commission can decide, is that event worth, um, you know, approving a four hour trolley or should we bump it up to six? Mm -hmm. Is that, a, should that event get all three of the things that they're applying for? Um, and that will give us a little, I think, more control over the money aspect as well, because as the sponsorships are supposed to go to, grants and sponsorships are supposed to go to work marketing the event. It's not to pay for bands. It's not to pay yeah. for stuff. Um, it's to pay for the marketing. And so this would be a separate aspect to that. Like you could still apply for $1,000 to market your event. And in addition to that, we have a meeting planner package where you can apply for a transportation mm -hmm. option. And so uh, we're, we're working on more details in that at all. And you kind of have the top sheet in your packet, which is like the very bird's eye overview, but anything from gift basket options to coffee breaks, to board luncheons, things like that, anything to, to bring a meeting planner here and try to bump up that business. I feel like we do a really good job marketing leisure. Um, in fact, we just started a new campaign in May that's going really well. Um, but I feel like we really do need to start putting a little more money toward meetings and convention incentives. And right now, that, that tourism grant fund is very small. Mm -hmm. And the destination and um, partnership fund is very small. So I want to cut trade show grants in half and put that money towards destination partnerships. And I want to take the trolley money and put it towards the rest of this meeting planning uh, incentive. Mm -hmm. In addition to some other things that I outlined in here, the software that Laura is um, researching and that could take permitting out of our department. So that's why I wanted to talk about those things back to back so you could see the potential. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not just saying, hey, I want that money and I'm gonna do whatever with it. Like we have a, we have a pretty, pretty well outlined marketing strategy for what I think $97,000 could do for us. Mm -hmm. You used to have tourism before it was done like this? Yes. I mean, when I was reading through the packet, I mean, the, the, um, the fact that the residents like it, that's great. Um, I know that you will probably get feedback, um, but people have to understand that you're running a business um, and that gets lost, I think, sometimes. So um, I, I agree that if the trolley isn't being used for what what it's being funded um, to do, then it's something that probably needs to look at. And I love the fact that it's a, it's almost like a perk mm -hmm. um, for, for meeting planners um, that they could also have like as part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what yeah. people are looking for. They, their guests could have access to the truck. 
Well, and keeping it under destination partnerships also means things like Bach Fest, Good Neighbor Fest, um, Stone Horse Green events can apply for it too. So that leaves it a little bit more open too for some more community-based things uh, that maybe we don't consider them a, a, you know, Good Neighbor Fest isn't necessarily considered a tourism event. It's kind of a homecoming, but maybe, you know, besides the parade, maybe there's another way to bring people from that area down to downtown. And so we can decide how much money we want to put toward that section um, and everything else. We're still waiting on software numbers. Um, Laura actually spoke with a vendor yesterday and he's supposed to get back to us. So we're, you know, we're still flushing out a lot with the budget, but we can't really go much further until I know what you, what your decision is. I just think this would be such a um, good selling thing when somebody's thinking they're on the bubble, whether they're going to come here or not, and that it's, it, this would be a cool thing to do. I just, I see that. Yeah. And it's, it's not going to be, but we'll just have it run. You know, I, I really like the on, that's needed kind of thing to make people feel like they're special. And we're very fortunate to have, have access to the child too. You know? mm -hmm. could use it for fans too. Exactly. We've actually talked about that with Destination Medicine. Yeah. So, but right now I have no money. Like I can't add anything to our budget right now. I ha we have to start looking at a way of allocating things in a, in a new fashion. And, and it only makes sense. It's, we're dealing with a different landscape right now. Right. Well, I, I also think that, you know, like when the trolley started, we have to give this a, a shot. We looked at that. Let's see what this does for us doing it with Snoop. Mm -hmm. um, I would make a motion to accept the, the report with the, with the edits to changing it to 31 weeks and, update, and updating the numbers. Writer should report. Do we need to vote? I, I don't think we need to, to motion I don't on think that. We need to vote on okay. that. This is so more, yeah, this is more of the okay. presentation. Oh, okay. So yeah. really the only thing we have to vote on is, is number 10. Is whether or not we want to okay. accept the trolley agreement. So and, then that's it, where, or, and that's where before you guys want any input or no. Totally your call. I guess one I don't know if I can or I was your boss. I would be looking at is that an asset worth keeping anymore if it's gonna be used sporadically. I, we have more than one trolley. Yeah, we have we have technically have three. Yeah. We can't use the Middleton one because it's right. always on the road. Yeah. And like on a Sunday, for instance, or a Monday, it's marked up. You know, so we really we don't charter that thing out at all. I think we've had to use it on emergency use maybe a couple of times. Sure. So we don't use it for anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't know if that answers. Well, then, yeah, and, I, I don't know. I don't know the specifics on like, you know, I, I, are we going to keep it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if it's paid off. You know, I don't have that. It'll be a conversation with John, but, and I mean, I'll, I'll pose it to you this way. If the trolley remains available, I would very much like there to still be an incentive to use it. If the trolley is no longer available, then that answers that question. Yeah. And we could always still talk about shuttle services too. Well, like we, if there's a huge event and a hotel doesn't offer shuttle services, maybe there's a transportation aspect to a meeting incentive. Because I still want to give hotels an option to bring people around town if they have a group that, you know, they flew in or they all came in on a charter bus and the charter doesn't take them anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there are different avenues to explore. I prefer the trolley because it's adorable and it's mm -hmm. easy to market for me. But obviously, if they're not going to keep it, or if they only have the other two and they're not available, we'll have to discuss that with John. And if I had to guess, we'll have it. Would be my honest to God guess. Like, without the contract, obviously it will not be wrapped anymore. But that's, I think that's really a big deal. You know, you can, um, can you hang, you know, put something on the side of it? You know, well, I'm thinking like the a magnets. Game, you get a you magnets. Game, you get a lot of hotel use, and they just say we could for badge game, we could take you up there and just you know something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you could we could do temporary stuff like magnets, like if you wanted to get a magnet yes, created. The yeah. problem is they're not very big and they fall off. So like, I would definitely say the marketing portion of this would be tabled for when we we find yeah. out the, the trolley would be available. For today, I just. I need to know whether or not you guys want to continue this contract. And for that part, you do have to step up. Well, that's what I'm asking. Do you want any other input or anything from me uh, at all? Or are we good?
Okay, so Jim, take it away. We need a motion to approve or uh, the, the trolley uh, contract or discontinue our uh, service. And if we discontinue service, then I will submit in writing to Badger Bus before July 1, because that's according to our contract. Without any further discussion on it. Any other questions, further? Jose? Do you have any? Can you hear us okay? I can, yes. Okay. And I don't have any questions. In fact, I think that I, my belief is that the trolley should be discontinued. And I like your idea of allocating those funds. Um, tomorrow and in the house approach. And um, so that will be my vote to just not renew the contract with the trolley. Um, for all the reasons that you have mentioned, you know, uh, I live here in Middleton and I actually don't even see people who live in Middleton use it. I see it running around empty. Um, so I, I think it would be good if we just stop it. Say that you know it's a lot of money. That's a big contract. And although I personally close multiple pieces of fifty to one hundred thousand dollar pieces of business that probably would not come to Middleton, Wisconsin, if it weren't for the kitschy trolley that I can sell it to them, right? What is a hundred thousand? You know, of a hundred thousand dollar piece of business, forty thousand of that might be gas stream revenue, and then what percentage of that comes to Middleton, right? So how many of those programs do I need to book at our largest convention hotel to make up for a hundred thousand dollar expenditure? It's a lot more than what we book. And you can still so, pull that out of your hat. Is if, I'm, if I'll, I'll be personally sad to see it go because it's a selling tool. Yeah. You can use the, but you numbers can, wise, it doesn't make any sense. And you can refer them to the, the website. And they can still yeah, come back needed, for yeah. the yeah. program. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's needed. One thing I think that we also need to keep in mind is we're always competing with Destination Madison and that's a checkbook. We can write $20,000, $30,000 check to your pieces of business there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so room nicer would pay for us, right? right? So we need to have a way that's competitive with them to bring us, we're never going to be a level playing playground with downtown Madison, but something that will make them think twice. And maybe I should consider the website, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know with that, if anyone wants to make a motion. I will make a motion to not renew the contract. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Hi. Hi. All right. Thank you. No, we couldn't. But thank you all for listening and for, I mean, wading through everything that we were putting into your packet. And as far as everything else in the meeting planner incentive, obviously this is like our first crack. Um, I am keen to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Jim, you know, I mean, I reached out to you for the coffee breaks and luncheons, yeah. but if you have more ideas, we could get right back. Oh, yes, please. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Um, but if you guys have any other ideas that you think would work, uh, let's, let's talk about them and try to figure out how much they actually might cost and put yeah. them into the budget. Right now, I'm really just, I'm, I'm frameworking the budget and I'm, I'm the type of person, I wanna know how much I spent on pens right. <laughs> and then I track it. And so right now we're, that's, that's the process I'm in right now because I knew I, I'd, have to, I'd have to show you guys something in July. And, um, and so this is just kind of first crack. And part of this too, and we can discuss this in July, but I wouldn't mind knowing you guys' thoughts and feelings um, in this incentive package, it's talking about the trade show grant fund and cutting that down and putting more money toward the partnerships. And I just wanted to let you know that part of our conversation in July, we'll be talking about whether or not we can continue that fund as is, or if it actually needs to be discontinued altogether and rewritten. Because I've been having a lot of conversations with how the current guidelines are written and how they apply to to hoteliers who are on our commission yep. and that kind of thing. So we, it, I might be coming to you in July and saying, guess what? I'm not even going to include trade show grant fund mm -hmm. in our budget. I'm doing this instead. Um, so I just want to give you a little bit of a heads up, but I'm going to work with the city attorney on it too, because I want to make sure that whatever we have that I propose to you is already completely okayed by the city attorney before we even vote. Yeah. And then that way, it'll move things along a little bit faster for the budget. I have a question I, about, for, for Jim. It's just, when you have people calling and they're interested in booking, 
do they tell you, well, the other one's offering us this at all? Or Sometimes when it gets down to the negotiations, yeah. sure. They'll and there are those in. things that we can roll into what we want to, we could already have a, a, a deck to. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to put together, like in the meeting, the meeting planner incentive package, which is why I'm calling it big name, but kind of many. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and it'll still have an application process. It'll still need to be approved by the, the, by the commission. But people will be able to look at that and see. So these are all the options that a sponsorship can be. Because right now it's very much a, basically if you're an event, we'll give you money for marketing. And that's not going away. But we can add all these different incentives mm -hmm. to try any, anything. So a meeting planner thinks it's worthwhile going to Middleton. How, what is, um, what is the application process like now? And is it easy? Do you call it easy? No, it's only two pages. Yeah. I don't I think, think it's that done online. I, is it like, are they able to do it online? I think, no. Oh, it isn't a fillable. No, okay. Well, we can, we can change that. We, yeah, we can make that easier. I mean, they do, they are asked to submit like a marketing budget. So like, there is documents that need to accompany the application itself, but I, for what they are, could potentially be receiving, I don't think it's that yeah. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those are things too we need to go over. Like, mm -hmm. are we asking enough? Are we asking enough data? You know, that kind of thing. Those are all things that can be reviewed as we're going forward and redrawing some of these guidelines. And especially if we're beefing up the budget. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll be reaching out. <laughs> yeah, they really will you know and and one of the, uh, the big selling points for us is how accessible we are you know you jump right on and off the belt line who doesn't love that yeah. so and there are ways for us to communicate that too and that could be part of this meeting planner part that doesn't cost us money necessarily it's time and creating more individualized itineraries. Uh, Laura's already created fact sheets for events. So you're having an event and it's a sheet that says, here are the restaurants closest to you. Here, here are directions to the attractions from where you are. Um, and so we've already started implementing some of those things. But again, we can add that to the menu. So a meeting planner can look and go, really? You'll, you'll make those and bring them for us and put them out on a table and we don't have to do it. Um, anything that makes it just a little bit easier, yep. especially in this chaotic world where some of these meeting planners have lost some of their staff. So right. how do we make it easier for them and not harder for them? What would be a typical size of a meeting? How many attendees would, or the range would be from the meeting to start? Well, I, I budgeted out, you have to have like a hundred, and this was just me yeah, throwing a number out there. I said 150 overnight stays to qualify for like a coffee break. Mm -hmm. You know, 100, 150 overnight stays to qualify for a board luncheon picked up by us, that kind of thing. And we can talk about that a little bit more specifically because, you know, how much does that translate to? Is that enough people? Am I asking for too many or too few? Mm -hmm. But that's kind of the numbers that we were throwing around. Exercise and and I would put a cap. I would say down. even if you're bringing 300 people, the sponsorship is for 150 sure. coffee, and you pay for whatever's on top of that. Sure. But we'll cover the first X number of dollars. We can, and then we can decide if this is a worthwhile piece of business that's bringing so many people. Do we up that? And as a commission, we can we can write the guidelines to give ourselves a little bit more leeway in that as well. But again. I, I feel like we kind of just need to start from scratch on some of these. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to try. Yeah. Are we on 11? No, we, we're we just, we're in, so we voted. 10. We're on, we're, yeah, we're kind of like on. We have to defer 11. We're on like 10.1. Um, <laughs> yes. So 11 is one of the items that we need to defer to July because we're not, because part of that grant definition is tourism grant funds and instead of having you approve the whole thing accept one little piece and come back and approve the whole thing let's just push it to july if i could get a motion for that i'll motion to push the um agenda item 11 to july second uh any other further discussion or i'll okay. oh did you have something Oh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. That was all these that I carried.
<laughs> um, building maintenance. Oh, it's been ongoing for 10 years. What do you got? Oh, okay, so um, I did get some estimates for the exterior painting. Should have just torn the building down and rebuilt it at this point. Hey. <laughs> it's on the historical registry. I know, I know. And it's pretty. I'm sorry. It's 127 years old. Give it a break. Um, so I so I have three quotes now. Uh, B and E construction came in at 9850. They are the company that did our back pretty much remodel. Um I'll just move on to the next one. I can go back to that. But uh Epic painting came in at 8124. And Genesis came in at 15,947. So I will say uh, B&E and Epic, obviously, um, I mean, far lower, but uh, they, I don't think we're going to go through the same um, precautions as Genesis regarding the lead paint. However, we did find a document dated back, I think it was like 2010, that said the paint has been tested and it is lead free. It's not a certificate. So Genesis won't accept the documentation that I provided them. So they would still, I would have to go through some hoops and get a certificate issued by the state, which doesn't sound like it would be that easy. Um, so just, I mean, keep that in mind. They want it stripped on the outside. Well, we we need it needs scraped badly. Yeah. We can't oh, and just, if they we scrape it, then they then they'll if like, it's yeah. lead, then they need to like put down plastic tarps, and they need to make sure that like if the wind is right. blowing it all, then like it's a whole it's a whole big it's thing. Well, it's like I know we tried it when I was here. Yeah, so well, I'm guessing the last time we painted yeah. is my guess. I, I was on the commission that maybe. I mean, I don't know that we want. Um, in 10 years, a bunch of kids walking around with three eyes. No. If it is that <laughs> right. <laughs> you no. know, I mean, that's, that's not a good look for Middleton, but. No, definitely <laughs> not. But I mean, we did, the fact that it was tested. Um, and that, was that the last time it was painted? I believe so. It was, so, I remember, this is a long time ago, so forgive me, but I remember we had to go through hoops. Well, exit current staff did because of the colors and the historical stuff. And I don't remember if they changed the color, if they had a problem matching the color. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was just a bunch of stuff. The only way the building doesn't have lead paint on it is that it was completely recited sometime post-1978. And I don't so know. If it's, got, if it's got wood that's older than that, there's lead paint on it. All right. Where Genesis come out, they'll find it. I'm just, okay. We had to go through that last time. Extra for that. so that's how your $15,000 well, clearly, yeah. I, I mean, and I know I very impressed by Genesis, and they said that they do a ton of work with the state, the city, because of what what they can offer. Yeah. And yeah. were they the most expensive one? Yeah, well, yeah, they're the. But even if we did the other two, could we get a? Could we have somebody from the city come and check for lead paint? We could, um, but First, again, just to make sure before we even start. Yeah, because I mean, if it has to be done, no matter who. Yeah, we could do. Doesn't. But again, like, I don't know if if we go with Genesis, they're going to need that certificate through the state. And what was the next bid again? It was so it was ninety eight fifty from B and E. It was eighty one twenty four through Epic and fifteen nine forty seven through Genesis. And what like process do we have to go through to pick? Is that just your choice? Do you have to go through city or? Well, it starts here. So we make a recommendation. So what would happen is or, we would, yeah, you would make a recommendation on which one we would ask them for an MOA and right. come back with terms. And then you guys would read that sign off or not sign off. The attorney would have to sign on, sign off, you know, red line. Um, and hopefully we could begin in August if we could get, if we had it all yeah. signed we have up to by July. Pick one, or could we ditch the lowest one and just compare the two, or is well, it? We know? could we could ask for official proposals from two of them, but I don't. For the bidding process for this, do they just give prices, or did they give an out an itemized list of what they're? Yeah, like what are will what's Genesis doing that? Yeah, what's the extra other one? Six grand? Well, is I mean, it, like just, are the other ones just like it? Kind of. I don't care if there's lead paint, or are they also? So Epic. I mean, Epic is two pages. This all came online. Um, B and E 
one page and then Genesis okay. is, I mean, but they go into detail about um, power washing paint chips. I have a question and though. If the city does like paint check, wouldn't that be certified? Uh, a Genesis just said that it needed to go through the state. And that's all that they, okay. there's but a there, certificate that you can get that okay. needed to be done through the state. I didn't know that was a service the city offers. I have no idea. I was, okay. just, I was just. Yeah, say for instance, you're painting on a house downtown Madison um, and you're now in the union kind of crew kind of thing. They would call OSHA, OSHA is a state organization, not the, I mean, the state, federal state, right? So they will come and they will check on you. If you're not tarped out 20 feet, they will find you. Out of business, so that's how. It so this one's not doing that. Can I? Oh, I'm so. I mean, if both of them. Yeah, exactly. And if for how, like, if it's if there is lead paint, they can do everything. They do not you like scrub it by hand. Yeah, it cannot, it, it cannot be power wash because when you power wash, then it's just the same. Thing. Did you tell all three of them that you had a certificate? You had a note saying it was lead free. Um. No, really, only Genesis. Because they're the only ones that really were, they, they were raised going to take the precaution. So, yeah. so what what would you recommend? Like, are you concerned with the lead paint issue? I'm not, just because I did see that documentation that it had been tested. It, I mean, it again, it was dated I think 2010, and it didn't. It was very minimal. Um, so I can't say it was it. Well, where's it? Like a documentation, like who? What? It was like a memo. Um, well, I mean, how much could that honestly cost though? Like 500 bucks? Well, I mean, if it's more than that, would, I feel like it'd be worth the peace of mind right. to have it tested and official. have the official, like we, we did our due diligence and this is fine because if it is lead free, we could get this right. far less expensive. Right. Well, that's and, where you want to ethical, maybe a little bit on their bid if, if they know that it, you know. Right. If they, if they know that, but yeah, or yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, Genesis. Genesis, yeah. but, um, I don't know if we've looked into what that process. Yeah, what that process is, and to make sure that we have it certified. Otherwise, it looks like. Yeah. Is it less project? Lead inspector, lead paint inspector, or something. Don't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> you have been saying that for eight years. Uh, <laughs> do you know where Epic is from? And this is the middle to me. Are they the middle to you? Madison. Yeah. Well, that's why the other thing is: Are we required? Or is it just like, you know, for a middle thing, local company, or is that just like the right thing to do? Like, do we have to do that or just nothing's that? required? Okay. Yeah, I think it's encouraged, one, definitely. Um, one thing I like about the BE construction, there are some boards that need to be repaired, you know, in the back. Yeah, there yes. Are, and actually, different. all of them. Um, it would be having, having to add, yes, hire somebody else to do all that. So, with Genesis, that is assuming that we have lead in the paint. So, we're not going to have to like. Is, is that quote oh, assuming gosh, they're going to have to tarp? Well, the right. And like I still? said, the only way no, um, they would take that off of their labor is if we can provide them with um, certification. Think certification. Think so maybe we find out what that process so is, how long it will take, what the cost is. So my recommendation would be to have a motion to investigate lead testing and I mean, how should we put this? Uh, to have lead testing on the depot done and revisit the bids once we have that answer. <laughs> to get a state certification. Yes, yeah, uh, and that process. The only question I have is you're running out of time mm -hmm. with the fall, is like waiting until the third week of July to approve that gonna be an issue or do we approve like dollar amounts like we normally do, allowing you to just move forward? If you're comfortable with that, you can set um, an amount and say uh, it would be a motion to approve lead lead paint testing up to you know uh, uh, and and a contract for repainting not to exceed X number of dollars after that is done. You know, like we could do it something like that if you want well, to. Would we if it we know what Genesis wants if it's lead. Right. We might want to find out after the testing what their what the new bit would be. Right. I'm just saying if they need to get on the calendar. So yeah, what's right. the difference between not the lowest, but what's the difference between the middle and um, Genesis? Six range. Six thousand. 
Mm -hmm. the, the lowest and the highest you said or the not the lowest the get rid of the lowest take the yeah the one that's oh, okay right in the middle and what's the difference between the two and he's working down six grand six thousand i mean we don't have any idea what it what it costs to have lead test certification done no, and, I mean, and that does not seem like if it's a thousand dollars to that save six thousand dollars, it would be worth it. I, I don't know where that cutoff is. Yeah, I, don't, I, I just don't I, think it'll cost them. No. I have no idea though. I thought well, I think there's got to be certified lead inspectors when this all came yeah. out. They may want to get certified. 20 years ago, I was painting and we got sent for a whole training on how to deal with lead based paint. And it was all talking about this needing HEPA filters. You can't power wash. You got a hand scrub. You mm -hmm. can't, How about all this stuff? So the, I know that there's painting companies out there probably that have their own guy that's certified to test for lead, right? Like I, I, I think maybe, maybe it's got to be some guy from the state that comes down and that'll take you months. But, they but they might be able to yeah, I would refer so. us or like they might be able to say, no, it, it is lead free and this is how you get your certificate. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's important. So, to have that. How about this? How about a motion to approve a budget of no more than ten thousand dollars for lead testing and painting of the depot? And if it looks like our of uh, the the testing and the certification and the painting is going to exceed ten grand, then we have to come back to you. Or should we do sixteen? So in case if you do find out that there's there is then, there is then you're you right. Can, then you can just say, all right, yeah. Janice, let's bring your guys and start working. Because yeah, that's the thing is is like I know you, you probably could get on the schedule for August today, but like a month from now, you might be looking at September or April. Right. You know, if they're oh, not going to be painting sure. in the fall when it's rainy. Yeah. And you like, if we have a nice fall, maybe we can squeeze you in, but most likely. And you be, want yeah. this this fall? Well, we're we're hoping. Ideally, we're hoping to have it it's done. Just, it's really amazing. getting. Okay. In, in part because some of the sections are so bad that the wood is so, being exposed. Did you get the roof looked at yet or no? Yeah. Well, we had it looked at and it wasn't a problem. Um, Other than looks, right? Was it just the wind? Yeah. Uh, oh, it was no, it was, it was a, it was a delivery truck. truck. Is a delivery truck. Um, we are getting estimates for that, but um, our building inspector did look at it and he's not concerned. Yeah, it's just more of a start. Yeah, yeah, it's not structural. Yeah, so it's not a high priority, right? No, right. it isn't. <laughs> so how about this? Um, and a motion to uh, a motion to approve a budget not to exceed sixteen thousand dollars for lead testing and painting at the depot, exterior painting. Sounds good as can long I, as somebody's willing to make that. Up to 15. If there is lead, do we want a different amount? If it's not lead, I mean, well, the, the quote we have for if it's lead is about 15. Right. And we're adding another thousand. Are we at all? Well, I guess that question is are we at all interested in having Genesis do it if it's not lead? And it was, should be less than what they were planning on doing. Oh, that, that's inferred. That if if it's if it's lead free, then we'll get a, a bid from all yeah, yeah. three of them. Sure, yeah, because they sure. won't have all the labor. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. then it wouldn't be apples to apples. Because this looks like you could take a sample to the university and they'll test it for thirty bucks. There you go. Right. But and the end. Um, that well, where did you also get the right yeah. right chip? Right. <laughs> yeah. So what did it say? Did you there's a it? it's. Wisconsin Occupational Health Laboratory. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Here get a nice deep chip. So you can get it next day for 60. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I was just saying, like for lunch, you like want this easier than mold. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we would actually. I think we have to. So that analysis for home. So is, how does that sound? A motion to approve um, a budget not to exceed sixteen thousand dollars for lead testing and exterior painting of the depot. Somebody's got to make that motion. That motion to pursue lead testing with a budget of sixteen thousand for the painting of the depot. That sound good. Perfect. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. That was everybody. So motion carries. Um sustainability report so this is nothing that we have to discuss or vote on i was asked by the sustainability committee to include it in your agenda packet so that you had a chance to read it if you have any questions or comments please de deliver them directly to kelly we don't need to discuss them here perfect that cool i do okay. want to make a comment though as you, as you read the report 
that the depot is a city owned building and we're talking a lot about energy things and there's only so much we can do at this point. There's no dollar amounts on anything. So um, just keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah, in some ways we yeah. wouldn't um, we wouldn't qualify for some of these things because we're historic. Like we can't put um, solar panels on our roof, right? That kind of thing. Right. But there are other things in, in the in the, the report that could affect us as well. But any comments or anything, just send them straight to Kelly. She's going to sort through everything and deliver it to her, her own committee. I just wanted to make sure that it was in front of you before her deadline. All right, and then 14 and 15 have to be deferred, correct? No, tourism grant is a different thing than the trade show grant. Oh, gotcha, yep, sorry. So we can, <laughs> that is, okay, so we've got the old description of the tourism grant and then the new one, which has a new logo on it. And so this is something that, we just didn't get around to voting on last month because we ran out of time. So, and again, because we're thinking about redoing trade show grants and we're thinking about uh, restructuring how partnerships work, uh, which is under Depart uh, Destination Partnerships. If you would like, we could defer this till July to make sure that we aren't approving something that we're going to edit later. I think that's what I kind of feel like. I feel okay. like even though the trade show grants and partnerships and, and separate right. things, yeah, it's a bit, they are somewhat. And connected. to my knowledge, this sense. hasn't gone in front of the city attorney yet. And I would actually like him to sign off on everything that we have going forward for guidelines. Yeah. So then we just need a motion to defer. Do you want this to go to city attorney after we next? Yes. Month? After, after we, we have gone through it with oh. a fine tooth pen, uh, fine, yeah, fine yeah. tooth comb. Then I take it to city attorney. Um, otherwise, we could be yeah, going back and forth for quite some time. time. Yes, right. Let's legal and cost. Yeah. <laughs> well, and we only meet once a month. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think so. All Is right. Does one? someone want to make that motion? A second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Oh, that was everybody. Okay, and then number 15 is another thing we have to defer, defer please. Make a motion to defer number 15 to July, to July's meeting. Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 That was everyone, so the motion carries. Okay. And then 16, obviously, you know, I withdrew that yeah. based on conversations with Mark, so um, they've got a lot of cool things going as you guys are now privy to um through this meeting and uh i don't know you have kind of apologized to me about all the changes but i'm like i think a new look is is yeah. not a bad thing yeah i do think it makes more sense to the meeting incentive issue yeah. those, those are parts of the same conversation right so, so that is all we have so wow well, yeah, i know we got through it but we need to figure out if we need to add anything to the next agenda. yeah so anybody the, have any ideas so the next agenda is going to be tourism grant fund tourism uh oh excuse me trade, trade show, show grant fund um definitions basically some of these are the exact same thing yeah um criteria and hopefully we'll have the tourism economic report i can share with you and i don't know if we need to add it but if, if there's an announcement on the next director yeah that would be they would not be starting till august one yeah um but we should i mean as long as there's something public i would think there would be i'm a, i'm assuming we're gonna know by, hopefully by the end of july let's let's hope and then um, that person's first commission meeting won't be August, it, as long as everything works. Like, you know, I don't know how much time people have to get that kind of thing. Correct. Um, so we can do that. A director. Tuesdays. And we could have that discussion. If you guys would like, before we adjourn, we can discuss if you want to move the meeting. Do you guys like Tuesdays from four to six, or would you like me to send out a doodle poll and choose another date and time? I feel like we've already talked about this, but I, we can't. Doesn't matter to me. I, I, I just like the. Early I mean, we have one. New, we have one new member. 
And I don't know what people's schedules are, are like. Um, this works for me. I prefer okay. an earlier. Yeah, I feel like later in the week, it kind of gets a little yeah. harder. I think the only other day I would change Thursday. But... Not like Saturday night? Uh, maybe every other Saturday. <laughs> so I'm just How about, bad, yeah. Jose, is this an okay time for you? I, I could read lips. Yeah. Like said, for right? Right? Yeah. Um, the time frame of four o'clock, we did recently make that change in the last couple of years. Is that okay still? Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? 5 30 was right. just too yeah. late for. Um, yeah. Bumps up the other. yeah. Is there, okay, was there anything else we wanted to add? Oh, I will, I will say this. I'm going to put it down. And hopefully we'll have something. I'm hoping to have at least kind of like a rough, rough draft of the budget to show you guys in July. So at least you can see the direction. Um, I definitely want you all to be signing off on that because we don't know who the director's going to be. And so we're we're making a lot of really big decisions for a potential stranger. And so, and I mean, I'm making some big, big changes, right? So I would I would definitely like you all to weigh in on whether or not you think it's the right direction for us. Um, and since I have to turn something in in August, which would be potentially the new director's very first meeting with you is to present to you the budget, mm -hmm. uh, I want to be able to have something as close to done as possible. And so I'll just, I'll just mention that it's going to actually, I mean, you've seen part of it now because the meeting incentive part is a, a chunk of that budget. And I mean, I've always put together the marketing one, so that part isn't changing like hugely for next year because all of the big changes we made this year was my benchmark year. So we're kind of rolling with a very similar structure for the next year or two years to see how it's actually like the momentum is gaining uh, before we make any huge swings in marketing. Unless I get a ton of extra money and then I'll do something pretty cool. But uh, just so you guys know, I'd like to present something in July on, on the budget. Um, could we make the meeting in July as a meeting I'm going to be out of town? They will all be Zoom meetings. Okay. So far right now, I've been told that we're, I'm required to, to keep a hybrid option okay. and to make sure recordings. So I'll keep, I'll keep Zoom links um, active for all of the meetings. I just ask that we make sure, especially for July and August, we can make forum. Right. So lock those dates in, guys, mm -hmm. <laughs> because... Uh, we, it, it's, it's kind of a part, it, this is a time of year where it's, it's hard if people skip. Yeah. So, and it's also a horrible time of year because everybody is so busy. So I thank you very, very much for mm -hmm. coming here to almost, oh God. No, we were quick. Guys. Yeah. yeah but you all need to eat something. Yeah. We yeah. Need motion to adjourn yeah. So, before we do that too. Yeah. If someone wants to make a motion to adjourn and you can all eat I'll some snacks. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's aye. the discussion part of it. I don't know. It's the only note I is, but I didn't sign in. Okay. I'll give this to Lori and find out what I have to do. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Who motioned and who seconded? I motioned. Okay. No. You were really active in the minutes today. Boom. Oh, and everyone well, gets fed. Oh. I want to make a motion. Yeah, you right. you can stop that. over right. Jose um, you. and yeah. have some yeah. snacks with us. I wish I could, but I'm in the floor, supposedly. Nancy, thank you. Well, thank you for coming. We're no all problem. adjourned. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye okay. See you later. Okay. How does Bye. this? Yeah. You <laughs> stop recording. No. Um. So I've gone to two or four since training. We want training sessions to get in the international organization. Management. Oh, yeah. And so it has.